<clears throat> okay, let's continue on here. We're going to start with number 20. Or did we do 19? We did not do 19, so we're going to have to do 19 first. Uh-oh, we'll come back to this. Okay, so number 19. F of X equals 3X squared minus 5. G of X equals... 22x plus 5, and h of x equals the square root of 4x plus 2. Okay, so this is going to be all of the function operations. Okay, so a wants us to find f plus g of negative 2. Well, remember what this means. This means f of negative 2 plus g of negative 2. So f of negative 2 is going to be 3 times negative 2 squared minus 5. And g of negative 2 is going to be 22 times negative 2 plus 5. Okay, so this becomes 4, 12 minus 5 plus negative 44 plus 5. 12 minus 5 is 7, plus negative 39 gives me negative 32. Okay. All right, just double checking my key as I go. All righty, so I've already found a couple of mistakes. All right, B is H of A minus 7. That means I take the h function, and wherever I see an x, I replace it with a minus 7, and then I simplify. So that becomes the square root of 4 times a minus 7 plus 2, which gives me the square root of 4a minus 28 plus 2, which is the square root of 4a minus 26. You could factor out the two, but it, it won't lead to anything. Okay, C asks for h dot, whoops, h dot f of x. This is the same thing as finding h of f of x, which means every place in h that I see in x, I'm going to replace it with f. So this becomes the square root of 4 times f of x now instead of x, which is going to be 3x squared minus 5 plus 2. And now I simplify. So that becomes the square root of 12x squared minus 20 plus 2, which is the square root of 12x squared Minus 18. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see what else we got going on here. Okay, so D, our next one, asks us for G dot F of 4. Okay. Now what that means is we're going to find F of 4, and whatever that value is, we're going to put it into G. So I'm going to start out by finding f of 4, which is 3 times 4 squared minus 5. That gives me 3 times 16 minus 5. That's 48 minus 5, which is 43. Okay. So now I want to find g of 43, which gives me 22 times 43 plus 5, which is 951. Okay, then E asks for FG of X. Well, this is the same thing as saying F of X times g of x. 
So f of x is 3x squared minus 5, and h of x is 22x plus 5. So I'm just going to do my double distribution. I'm going to multiply 3 times 22 gives me 66x to the third, <clears throat> plus 15x to the second, minus 110x, plus 25. Oops, that's not plus, that's minus. Okay. Okay, so now we can go to 20. Man, I had it all ready for you. All righty. So here's what we've got going on here. These are piecewise functions, which means that the function is defined differently for different parts of the domain. Okay, so I like to graph it first and then do the evaluation. So the first thing I do always is I mark my boundaries. I know I'm going to switch functions here at negative 2. And I know I'm going to switch functions here at 3. Okay. All right, so where S is, excuse me, F is less than negative 2, the function is 3x plus 5. Well, I'm going to find its value, so I'm going to take this and x, and let's do negative 2. Whoops, x is negative 2, so that's 3 times negative 2 plus 5, which is negative 1. So that gives me negative 2, negative 1. Now, it does not include that, so it has to be an open circle. Now, from here, I can do it either a couple of ways. Well, let's just do another point. Let's do negative 5. So 3 times negative 5 plus 5 is going to be negative 10. And my grid doesn't go that far, so let's do negative 4. So 3 times negative 4 plus 5 is negative 7. So I have negative 4, negative 7. And then I connect my dots. Okay. In the middle here, if the function is equal to 5, that's a horizontal line where the y is 5. So a horizontal line at 5 between negative 2 and positive 3. It includes it, so there's a solid circle here. It's open. So it's an open circle here. All right, then negative x plus 4, where x is greater than or equal to 3. So if x is 3, negative 3 plus 4 is negative 1. So I have the point 3, that's positive 1, excuse me, positive 1. It includes it so it is a solid circle. And let's do 5. Negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. So 5, negative 1. And it goes on to infinity. So I will just connect my dots. And there you have it. Now if you've graphed it correctly, you can find all of these values from your, fun from your function. Okay. Well, f of negative 5, well, we did that before. We already know that's equal to negative 10. Because I, I had already done that in error. f of 0, when x is 0, y is 5. And f of 3, we had already done that one as well. That's going to give me 1. So those are the values that you need. Okay, for the next one, we only have two functions, but what do we have to find g of? We have to find g of negative 2, g of 0, and g of 5. Okay, so we'll come back and graph them later. All right, so our dividing line here, the only boundary we have is where x is equal to 0. So we've got, we're going to have a separate function on this side and a separate function on this side. 
So, since it's zero, I can just use slope-intercept form for this. I know for this function, my y-intercept is negative 3, but it does not include that. And then if my slope is 1, that means I go up 1 over 1, which is the equivalent of going down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. Or you can make a table of values. I'm trying to look at a couple of different ways while we're doing this. Okay. All right, 1 half x, where x is greater than or equal to 0. Once again, my slope-intercept form tells me that I start at 0, 0. It does include that point. And my slope tells me to go down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2. You only need two points, but I like to be as precise as possible. And there is your function. So there's the graph, and now we can evaluate g of negative 2 is negative 5. And again, you can also just say it's in this function, so it is negative 2 minus 3. g of 0 is in this function, and g of 0 is 0 from the graph, or you can say negative 1 half times 0 which is also 0. And then g of 5, I can't tell exactly what that is from the graph, so I am going to put it into negative 1 half times 5, which is negative 5 halves. So you can do it either of those ways. Okay, I'll hang on to that. We may want to come back to that know how much more graphing we have to do. All right, so let's move on to 21. Okay, for each of these, we need to find the domain and range of the function, find the inverse, and find the domain and range of the inverse. Okay, so for a, f of x is equal to the square root of x plus 3. Okay, all right, now I'm, again, I'm going to look at this in a couple of different ways. This, we know, is the square root function that has been moved to the left 3. So 1, 2, 3. And then we know it looks something like this. Okay. This is the principal square root, since there's not a plus or minus in front of it, which means that whatever I take the square root of is going to be non-negative. So that tells me that my range is going to go from 0, and it's going to include that, to infinity. Now my domain, I know that x plus 3 has to be greater than or equal to 0, so x has to be greater than or equal to negative 3, which means my domain is negative 3 to infinity. So that's part 1. Okay, for part two, I need to find the inverse. Okay, so that means I'm going to take this and make it a y, and then I'm going to flip the x and the y. So I have x is equal to the square root of y plus 3. I will square both sides to get rid of the radical. So that tells me x squared is equal to y plus 3 subtract 3, and I get x squared minus 3 is equal to y, which tells me that f inverse of x is equal to y. Okay, okay so now, once again, if I know my graphs, this is the graph of the quadratic function that has been moved down 3. However, it was the principal square root, so we're only looking at the positive values. This agrees with if you swap the domain and range. The domain for the inverse goes from 0 to infinity. The range of the inverse goes from negative 3 
to infinity. Okay, let's look at b. b is f of x is equal to 2 over x minus 5. Okay, once again, let's look at the graph. Okay. This is the rational function that has been moved down 5 units. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so what that tells me is my horizontal asymptote has been moved down 5. My vertical asymptote is still 0. And I know my graph does something like that. So my domain, or I, and you can think about it in another way. <coughs> where is it undefined? That's my vertical asymptote. It's where x is equal to 0. Either way, my domain goes from negative infinity to 0, and then from 0 on to infinity. The range is everything except this asymptote, so it's negative infinity to negative 5, and then negative 5 to infinity. <coughs> okay, so let's find the inverse now. All right, if I make this y and switch the x and the y, that gives me x is equal to 2 over y minus 5. Okay, so let's move the 5 over, so that gives me x plus 5 is equal to 2 over y. Now this is a proportion, so I can rewrite this as y times x plus 5 is equal to 2. And then to get the y by itself, this is y equals 2 divided by x plus 5. Now it gets really messy when I graph this, but I do want to show you what happens here. Okay. The vertical asymptote is where, where the denominator is 0. Well, that would be where x is negative 5. So that becomes your vertical asymptote. And then your horizontal asymptote, since this degree is less than this one, defaults to 0. So your horizontal asymptote is here. And then your graph does something like that. Okay, so that will confirm that my domain and range are flip-flopped. So for my domain, it's everything except the asymptote, which is negative infinity to negative 5, and then negative 5 to infinity, and then the range, everything except that horizontal asymptote, which is negative infinity to 0 and 0 to infinity. Okay, for part C, f of x is equal to 3x minus 5. Okay, graphically this is a line. It has a y-intercept of negative 5 and a slope of 3. So up here, 1, 2, 3, over, 1, 2, 3, over. So there's my function. Okay. But if you don't think about that, then you know this is a polynomial of degree 1, so the domain and range are unlimited. So the domain is everything, and the range is everything. Okay, so for part two, I'm going to switch the x and the y. So this becomes x is equal to 3y minus 5. Solve for y. So x plus 5 is equal to 3y. So y is x plus 5 over 3, which tells me that at inverse of x is x plus 5 over 3. Now, I can rewrite this. This is actually the function x over 3 
plus 5 over 3. So this is just another linear function. Okay. So my y-intercept is 5 thirds. So that's right there. And then I go up 1 and over 3. And here is the inverse graph. Okay. All right, so part three, this is another linear function. So my domain is everything, and my range is also everything. Okay, um, I think we've got time to do 22 on this. All right, now finding the domain and range from a graph is um, we just look and see what are the possible x values and what are the possible y values. Okay, so for this one, there is no limit on the x's. There is nothing that will bar it on either side. So the domain is going to go from negative infinity to infinity. The range, however, it will never go above 4. It touches the 4, so it is everything below that. So in the proper notation, the range is from negative infinity to 4 with a bracket. If you have a rational function, it's everything except the asymptotes. It goes everywhere except the asymptotes. So the domain is going to be horizontally everything from here, jump over this and go on. So it's negative infinity to negative 1, and then negative 1 to infinity. Then the range, it starts at negative infinity, comes up to 2, and then goes across. So that's negative infinity to 2, and then 2 to infinity. Okay, and our last one here, well, there are no arrows on the end, so we're just going to box it in. All right, so everything goes between negative 4 and 5 horizontally. So that means our domain is negative 4 to 5. And our range, the smallest value is 4, and the largest value, I'm sorry, negative 4 to 4. So the range is negative 4 to 4. Okay, so this is a good place to stop.